One night, my wife and I were out. We were stopped at a, a traffic light, at a red light, and I actually fell asleep behind the, behind the wheel of the car. And uh, that served as a catalyst to me that there was something wrong and I needed to do something about it. So this is your first visit into the sleep clinic? Right. What I want to do is ask you to describe what the symptoms were. The primary symptom was a pain between my shoulder blades every morning when I woke up from my wife thumping okay, fair you know, enough. My, my back. Um, but I was tired during the day. Um, Patients will most commonly complain about difficulty with sleeping at night. And that's something that's somewhat insidious and kind of grows and evolves over time and people put up with it. They kind of deal with it and accommodate to it and don't necessarily come to medical attention for sleeping poorly at night. And then what will almost inevitably evolve is something happens during the day. I was driving, pulled up to a red light. I stopped and promptly fell asleep. Okay. Yeah. And now it's obvious enough to everybody. It's either embarrassing or significantly putting you at risk. And so then he certainly needs an evaluation with a sleep study to evaluate his sleep and his breathing during sleep to try and quantify what clinically we think is present. And the study itself involves spending a night in the sleep lab environment. Okay, Dan, we're gonna to start to put the electrodes on now. Good. When a patient first arrives at the sleep lab, they're greeted by the technologist. Okay, now I'm going to prep the sites uh, on your scalp where we're going to put the EEG electrodes. I'm going to attach them with a water-soluble adhesive. It will come out in the morning with, uh, with a shower. All right, good. The electrodes that I'm going to place on your, your eyes and chin will let us know when you're in dream stage sleep. Will you be able to see what I'm dreaming? Can't see that, but I can see when you are dreaming. You've got things attached to your head, you've got things attached to your neck, and around your shoulders, your legs. Uh, you've got a couple of things stuck around your nose to measure, you know, air pressure and things like that. One of my concerns was, with all of this paraphernalia, I'm going to sleep? All right, Dan, one more sensor and then we're finished. You sure about this? Absolutely. <laughs> so you think I'm going to actually be able to sleep wired up like this? A, a great majority of patients feel they won't be able to sleep once wired up, but mostly everyone does. Good. <laughs> All the electrodes that are placed uh, on, on the patient get plugged into a head box. That sends a signal to our acquisition PCs in our control room. We monitor airflow, pulse oximetry, respiratory signals, and what different stages of sleep the patient is in. And every second of the study will be looked at and scored. And then the physician will interpret and make a conclusion as to the presence or absence of the sleep apnea, and if present, the severity of the sleep apnea. Here we see that Dan is having uh, an obstructive apnea where there is no nasal airflow, but there's continued effort to breathe. He starts breathing in very rapidly uh, and very deep, and there's also an arousal from sleep in this area uh, at the end of the respiratory event. So this is something that is typically seen in someone with obstructive sleep apnea. It was time very, very well spent because I learned from that that I did have sleep apnea and I learned from that that this is a condition that with some patients with the right equipment can be managed effectively.